Good evening, everyone. I am Dr. Navedita, and on behalf of uh, Netflix, I welcome you all to today's uh, session. Um, today, we have with us uh, Dr. Rohit Jaka. He's a consultant physician and an intensivist at Kraft Hospitals and AR Medical Center, Cochin. Dr. Rohit, uh, over to you. So, hello, everyone. Good evening. Uh, welcome to another interactive, lively session which we have with one of the top cardiothoracic surgeons of India. So today we have the topic of bypass versus stents. Before starting with that, when it comes to cardiothoracic surgeons in India, there are only a few experts who have mastered the field throughout time. Dr. Vivek Zavali is one of, one of the best cardiac cardiothoracic surgeons who have pioneered the minimally invasive heart surgery in India with a success record of over 18,000 cardiothoracic surgeries. He beholds the prestigious tag of pioneering the minimally invasive heart surgery in India with his first surgery in the year 1992 on a beating heart. He went on to perform India's first awake earth heart surgery in the year 1999. He has 29 index papers, book chapters, 11 national orations and countless national and international guest lectures and live surgery demos to his credit both in India and in abroad. With a rich experience of more than 39 years and over 30,000 surgeries under his belt, Dr. Vivek Zawali is unquestionably India's best cardiac surgeon with a near-perfect success record. Currently, he is working as the Chairman of Cardiac Sciences and the Executive Council of Fortis Hospitals, Bangalore. He is also an Executive Council Member, Association of Cardio Cardiovascular and Thoracic Surgeons of Asia, Founder Member of International Society of Minimally Invasive Cardiac Surgeons, former Vice President of Indian College of Cardiology, and such names and laurels are innumerable under his name. The One of the key roles which he's ever played is the Sri Jayadeva Institute of Cardiology at Bangalore in founding it, then founding the Vocard Hospitals Bangalore. He was one of the board of directors of Vocard Limited and now the Fortis Hospitals. He's the first in India to perform an off-pump beating heart bypass surgery in 1991, minimally invasive bypass surgery in 1995, Minimally Invasive Cardiac Wall Surgery in 1996, Awake Non-Incubated Cardiac Surgeries in 1999, being the world pioneer in it. It's a great pleasure to introduce Dr. Vivek Zawali, who is also recognized as the recipient of the Harvard Medical International's Lifetime Achievement Award for Medical Excellence in India. We welcome you, sir, on behalf of Netflix, and we welcome you to a lively talk and we are most delighted to listen to your words. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Good evening to everybody and thank you for being here. It's quite Hi. chilly in Bangalore. I'm wearing a sweater. It's very pleasant here. Today, my endeavor is to talk to you not about stent versus bypass surgery. What is the place in the treatment of coronary artery disease, the disease that gives heart attacks of medicines, of stents, and of bypass surgery. And what are the confusions that are going on? What is the hype and what is the reality of in these confusions? So, let's go with the next slide. You know, coronary artery disease, plaque formation happens due to multiple factors risk factors, some of them avoidable, some of them modifiable, some of them not modifiable. Whatever it is, the plaque starts like this and slowly grows. When it grows much bigger and then it can rupture, it can give rise to heart attack that can cause bad heart failures or can kill, can spoil life, can spoil longevity. And that is why some treatment is required. A, prevention, which is quite possible. That's why we have World Heart Day and B treatment. Treatment, mostly it was all medicines and it was very simple treatment, but then came bypass surgeries in the early 60s and it transformed the field so much that we had something new that could guarantee us and it's widespread and millions underwent bypass surgery. Then for anything, disruptions come and came the angioplasty, balloon dilatation, as a disruption by Andrei Grunzig uh, in Zurich in 1977 in September and that caught everybody's imagination. It was such a simplistic approach to this whole problem and then any disruption 
is not good enough. It will just stay there stagnated. We had wired phone, then we had the mobile phones, non-wired phones. We had offset printing, then we got digital printing, disruption. But unless the disruption is followed by many sustaining technologies, then only it will evolve. So after the angioplasty was championed by Andrei Gunziak, then came the different wires, different balloons. Those days they used to do only plain balloon dilatation. A lot of times things would go wrong. They would suddenly close, rupture. I had to come to the hospital in the night almost three to four times in a week. It was bad times. But then rapidly newer technologies came. Then there came stents. The stents came in the mid 80s and they transformed. All trouble stopped. I stopped coming for emergencies. And then the stents evolved. Wires evolved, catheters evolved. Then came a lot of new monitoring and imaging techniques like the intra arterial ultrasound, and then all kind of uh, imagings. And so it whole thing got OCT, whole thing got very sophisticated. Today, where we are, any block can be drilled through, can be dilated and opened, and we can stand everything. But the question is, which block that you have drilled or dilated and put stent will remain open and the stent will not go. So only those blocks in whom the stent will stay patent for years and years should be subjected for stenting. Those which will not do like that should be subjected for bypassing because at the same speed, it also has been extremely sophisticated. In our hands today, the bypass surgery risk factor in a straightforward case has almost come nearer to zero, around 0.5%. And in complex cases, it could be a little more and more, but then on average, it's all below 5% in bad cases because we have so much of gadgetry today to do it properly. Now, when the uh, stentings came and then it became an industry and the industry became rich, then rich and very, very rich industry. A lot of money started flowing in this area and then started all kind of, uh, you know, insulation, manipulation, manipulation of science, manipulation of guidelines, manipulation of practices. So then guidelines were important. At that time, in the beginning, three important studies were launched. The coronary artery surgery study, big study across the world, veteran hospital study in America, and one more study for diabetes called the Bari study. All the studies showed that the bypass surgery was doing better. But then te technology changed and so newer and newer studies kept coming and then guidelines were required. The problem started because the company started interfering and there was too much of money in that and these gra vein graphs, internal memory graphs had no money behind them. So the guidelines, politics was, if you see in this slide, ESC is European Society of Cardiology. In that guideline committee, there are 46 cardiologists and one surgeon. So they will have an overwhelming uh, opinionated kind of thing and the guidelines will be hassled. American, ACCAHA, 23 cardiologists, only two surgeons. The BCS, the British cardiology, eight cardiologists, one surgeon. So the whole overall recommendations were vitiated and hence there was a potential bias and that led to so much of confusion that people were overstenting and it was not uncommon that there were eight stents and nine stents and seven stents were very common those days. And they all failed precipitously and it created a lot of bile. And all the money was going to only a couple of countries. So many countries were buying these stents. So came a lot of trials. All these trials were done on technologies which got changed because something new came on the horizon. And that was the drug eluting stent. The drug eluting stents were supposed to be extremely sophisticated. And it was felt that now the bypass surgery should be stopped. These stents will never get blocked because they have got some chemical inside and that will completely be a game changer. So the companies boldly came forward, put in a lot of money and launched some very good astute trials to check out where surgery should be done, where uh, stents should be put, thinking that everything will be stents. And they boldly put money. So what happened at that time when this confusion was going on, people had cheek to even present such cases for a scientific journal as high journal as the American College of Cardiology and the journals had a cheek to publish it. 
This is a case report of a patient who had undergone 67 stents in 10 years. Can you imagine what would have happened to this patient? So this, this, all this confusion had to be stopped. So new age trials were launched. The trials were two. One was syntax trial, which was a comparison between surgery and drug eluting stents. And freedom trial, which was a trial specifically for diabetic patients where there is an inflammatory change and the changes may gallop. And hence it was felt by an older study called Bari study that bypass surgery was better. Was it really true? It challenged. And so freedom trial was launched. And they were all astute, very scholarly, new age studies where we could not point finger at them. And both of them were expensive because the drug company, the drug eluting stent companies were putting money on them. For example, the syntax study costed $1.2 billion. It spread across USA, Canada and multiple centers in uh, Europe. And so all top people were, you know, participating in this study. So also was the freedom trial. So this was supposed to throw us a light where all the controversies should stop. A person who has got a straightforward single artery disease, which is nice, there is no controversy. A person out of the three arteries or two artery disease, which are again tight and short and nice, there is no controversy. These people will do damn well. I have got relatives who have been stented in 90s and doing so well today. Then came another important indication that people who have got chest pain, you take a ECG and there's a heart attack starting. And these heart attack guys are quickly taken ambulance to the hospital. And in the first three hours, they are angio angiogram block is seen, which artery is causing the heart attack is seen. If that heart attack, that, that block is dilated and stented, there is a miracle. The whole damage to that heart muscle comes back and you, you get a heart which is, which is new like before. So today, this has come like a God's gift to mankind, the emergency angioplasty and stenting. And those people who have any doubt in mind know this is the best that has happened to cardiology. So we are coming back again to people who have got multiple artery disease or the left main. There are three arteries, left front, left back, right. Left anterior descending coronary artery, circumflex artery, left back, and the right coronary artery. The left two arteries arise as a single artery, left main, one and a half centimeter. A block there can be very dangerous and it can cause instantaneous death. So, there started this big Mahabharata, these big two studies were launched. These studies, before I talk about them, you must know certain terms in medicine, in research. MACE means Major Adverse Cardiac Events. When you add another C to that MACE, it's Major Adverse Cardiac Events plus a stroke, cerebral event. Repeat revascularization means I put a stent or a bypass, it failed and I have to do some other procedure again. Repeat revascularization. If you have to do again and again repeat revascularization, your first time procedure is not good. And so you must straighten your indications, whom, should, whom I should do what. And also power of trial. If somebody has done a trial and has presented that paper, that trial should have a big size, the endpoint should be crystal clear. There are certain characters. So that paper should be type A paper, class one. And other papers, we shouldn't really give much importance. When we talk about the classes of recommendation, if guideline and we recommend by the government, by a body, by a scientific body, by a hospital. Class one means evidence and or general agreement that given treatment or procedure is beneficial, useful and effective. No debate. All other things are below that class two, class three and all. That, that class one or two can be class one A, B, C. So what is class one A? A means there is class 1A means there is no debate, no controversy. It is an absolute guideline, absolute directive. This syntax trial did something very disruptive. They brought in a scoring system. Previously, we were not scoring and we were trying to like foolishly compare apple to oranges. And all scientific outcomes were all, you know, dogmatic. Now, syntax trial brought in a concept that you will see an angiogram and you will give, you know, points and scores to all clinical uh, characteristics, some with diabetes, some with fat, some with renal problem, etc., etc. Then how this block looks like. And that also were given points. And the scoring 
when the when this trial was done they realized that anybody who has got a score of less than 22 angioplasty will do very good hands down those who had score of 22 to 33 we could debate anyway anybody who had a score of 33 and more there was no doubt they should be subjected to bypass surgery come to india come to japan come to china we are tiny guys small coronary arteries we have lots of diabetes lots of smoking we tend to have more diffuse disease and there most of the time the Sinta score is 33 and above this was the importance of Sinta. so after the Sinta scoring was born any research any decision making it is syntax scoring so the now life is pre-syntax scoring and post-syntax scoring now when the syntax trial was done it was done under at many centers in a cooperative fashion at a large number of patients the first year showed that surgery for multivessel disease one hands down so it came in new york times reader digest as a lay press news flash that whatever you are thinking is wrong the surgery is better for multivessel disease and don't get carried away but hey this was only one year and in such a short time how can you make a decision like that after some time the graphs will go so we said the syntax trial said that wait for five years every year we publish results and at the five year we can have some dud ka dud pani ka pani so first year it was winning then came this was like a news flash in new york times then came the the third year the third year also the yellow line is the stents and the blue line is bypass surgery bypass surgery was far better the problems happened much less problems happened much more and statistically there was a wide gap wide significance no but three years is not the case so i will i will pardon you from all that fourth year also the same story again surgery was winning so then a lot of grumbling started and the company started getting nervous because they had put so much of money and it was going against them so they said the syntax scoring is faulty then this journal lancet published another dramatic new concept corrected syntax scoring and it was called a syntax score 2 but the 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 the, 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 the funny paradox was actually syntax score showed that the past syntax score 1 was showing low syntax scoring and what was 23 now it would be 28 in the syntax score so actually many more patients should have been for surgery then came the fifth year fifth year syntax score of intermediate 23 to 32 here also surgery was winning then the, the yellow line is the stents drug eluting stents blue line is surgery then oh this is intermediate let us see what happens to the higher score higher was absolutely no debate hands down surgery was far better now this was a very astute study but then the problem is it doesn't suit to a lot of people and the grumbling started, all intelligent talking started. We see all around us in politics, all kind of intelligent talking. Same way in science. So more and more studies were launched. But anyway, syntax trial, whatever people talk, the, the truth of the matter is this was an important study and the surgery was shown to be far superior and a lot of doubts were created. The physicians who are the first place where the patients go, they must know about all this general practitioners must know about all this all this data is on the internet we shall not be talking today about a small time fly by night studies these are all class one studies class one guidelines these are all top unrefutable evidences we're not talking about anything that is not very important now freedom trial freedom trial was a strategy for multi-vessel revascularization in patients with diabetes this is one heavy journal called new england journal of medicine which is published from the Harvard campus and it's a very respected journal. If this journal is actually it is cynical towards surgeon. But this journal published this paper, this guideline, this trial and the trial concluded that for patients with diabetes and advanced coronary artery disease, bypass surgery was superior to angioplasties. PCI means per, per cutaneous interventions. It was superior to the stents that it significantly reduced rates of death and periprocedural heart attacks myocardial infarction means heart attacks now that was another blow then 
the the um, journal of american college of cardiology it is one of the top journals in cardiology they the foundation of the journal launched a study they said no there is so much of uh, dissatisfaction going on we will start this this study was called appropriateness criteria for coronary revascularization and it was sponsored by american college of cardiology foundation and it assembled experts to create 180 different clinical vignettes to represent a cross section of contemporary practices as encountered by working cardiologists and surgeons for two three vessel diseases and then the shock in this was again if you look at my this side it is bypass surgery if you look at that side it is the stents green a is appropriate u yellow is uncertain and i red is inappropriate and if you look at different cohorts all the way you can see that it is favoring bypass surgery bigger group then the european union which was reeling under recession the stents were causing it's all social medicine there it's not like india where everybody puts their hand in pocket it's all private government washed its hands off no in europe everything is social medicine from france germany italy everywhere and the governments were under lot of pressure so they said let's have our own guidelines so joint european society of cardiology and european association of cardiothoracic surgery guidelines blow this guideline show this side is surgery that side is stents and different cohorts if you eyeball the slides for favoring bypass surgery class 1a 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 all the way except that one vessel disease or two vessel disease where the left front artery proximally is not so much involved the left front artery supplies two third of the left ventricle so it can kill the left back artery supplies left ventricle but little bit and the right coronary artery supplies the weaker right right heart look at this european guidelines now this was all based on syntax scoring okay so anybody who had more than 22 score the european union said that this is the recommendation now this was all very confusing most of the general practitioners most of the physicians like my friend here many of them don't get to see this slide because most of the time the talks are given not by surgeons but by physicians cardiologists many many slides are actually prepared by the companies and given ready made so people save the trouble but then the the, the fine print is many of those slides would be preferred by convenience but people are too intelligent and the presentations could be very ingenious so credo kyoto guidelines from japan japan at the kyoto university putting as a center those japan is small country the numbers are small whole japan will do bypass surgeries like my 140s hospital will do so august 2011 it, this many patients were enrolled in 26 centers of japan all the data was mined in kyoto and the guidelines were churned out the guidelines were same as the european guidelines that i just now showed you but surprisingly it showed better outcomes with bypass surgery even in the low syntax scores less than 22 which was extremely surprising now another big blow then came the american college of cardiology and american heart association these two societies have globally a membership of 23000 cardiologists and surgeons these are all top cream of this world and every 2 3 years 2 3 years these people anonymously put a body called as a task force and the task force microcomes the the contemporary literature scientific literature and gives certain guidelines which are sacrosanct and then as technology changed again after 2 years they would come up with newer guidelines and they are presented in annual conference i will spare you all these um, complicated scientific wordings but what is class 1a what is class 1b or c but in this it is ball packed in this diagram again green y is yes definitely and n is no and c is borderline now if you can look at why this side is coronary bypass surgery and the other side is drug eluting stents and then again if you look through it it is uh, definitely leaning towards surgery now there were too many 
papers coming, too many papers coming, too many papers challenging all these big papers, big guidelines. And in literature today, I can defend anything, even to a judge in the court. So things have become very murky. Hard team and things syntax scoring. The problem is everything is pre-syntax scoring, after syntax scoring. But if I get any any angiography report from anywhere in India, even from the big astute uh, institutions, which are academic institutions, where there are dime a dozen PGs running around, enough manpower, unlike a private hospital, I hardly ever get to see that what is the syntax score of that patient. People will tell thousand reasons, but I, it's difficult for me to buy that. Now, is it cum it's cumbersome, it's time consuming, all are too busy, it's a, it's a whole sort process. No, today there's a software on it. What about institutional guidelines? Even they are not there, some big institutions. There's a 40s, there is money found, there is Narayan Udalaya. These people have got multiple hospitals across India. They could put institutional guidelines and everybody should shut up and follow the guidelines. No, we don't have those guidelines. Then what about teaching institutions with large number of PGs and residents? You know, heavy ones like PGI, AIMS, Jaydeva, Nijams, Sri Chitra. We don't see syntax scores in their reports. Then all that frost started, people are not happy and people went on with their life like that and controversy is raging and everybody is unhappy. The people who are sending cases, referring cases are mostly physicians and GPs. They are harassed, they are confused, they don't know who is correct. So they will prefer to take two opinions, one from surgeon, one from cardiologist. Then came another important study which shook everybody. It was called as the Excel trial. An Excel trial said that the left main artery block, because we know when a stent is put and the stent gets plotted, there could be catastrophe. But it's all right in small arteries. People were stenting left main after the syntax trial and syntax trial was all very conveniently misquoted. There are clear cut guidelines whom stents will do very well over years and years. And I have so many patients, I see so many years, 20 years, good patent stents. Emergencies, fantastic, but not for multivessel disease. Now this left main, people started putting left and right stents, even complex left main blocks. An Excel trial encouraged that. And then there was a guy called David Taggart. David Taggart is a chairman at the Oxford University Hospital. And he is a very scholarly guy, very outspoken guy. And that guy was so annoyed because everything was being manipulated and he walked out of the trial. And then walking out of the trial made a huge news on BBC. And the BBC news came punch, guardian, everybody started making noise. So ESCTS, that is European Association of Cardiothoracic Surgeons, because David Taggart made a noise, the European Association pulled out of this left main guideline of, of, of this Excel trial cover up after the BBC bombshell. And the BBC report also raises the question of whether potential conflicts of interest in the Excel trial influenced how the study was reported in that the study was funded by Abbott Vascular the company which is making stents and that many of the trialists have received funding from the stent manufacturers. The other principal investigators also were questionable because they received funding from Medtronic which is another big company making stents. So Excel trial was thrown into bin by the whole world. Then came a study called the Noble study and it was it was it had a nice five years of follow up it gave a new data on this left main business and this paper adds fodder to the controversy dogging this Excel trial and it said that Excel trial was not right and the guidelines given by Nobel trial favored left main coronary artery disease. This was 2019. Then this year, every year, there is a conference that happens globally. It's the biggest 10 conference. It's called as the TCT. The TCT conference this year this presentation came up. It was called as the FAME 3 study. And the FAME 3 study was awaited badly like the syntax trial. And it was supposed to give because even the drug eluting stem changed. They got more sophisticated. Everybody thought that the goalpost has now changed. And now we will have some different news that all these multivessel diseases could be routinely four or five stents can be justified. And then this CCT, it was presented. And at the same time, this New England Journal of Medicine, which is a heavy journal, this study was published in this journal and in patients with more complex, that is multiple blocks in these three arteries, 
severe blocks. Bypass surgery remained the treatment of choice, concluded Dr. Ferron, who is the professor of medicine and director of international cardiology at the Stanford University and School of Medicine at Stanford and the chief of cardiology there, who was heading this study. And even the fame free study this year came out with a term called double negative. And so now this is kind of a verdict of 2021. But the problem is nobody is getting satisfied because there is so much of stakes for all the industry and too many people involved in that. But these are all solid evidences. I am starting from the beginning of the history, throughout all the changing workforce, throughout all changing technologies to 2021. I am showing you some angiograms. Those who are doctors here would appreciate. These are all angiograms of patients. All of them are on average more than 12 to 13 years after surgery. The first diagram you see here is a patient who has got a left and right internal mammary Y. It looks like a normal angiogram of a normal patient. No, all original arteries are blocked, shriveled, and they are all bypassed by this double internal mammary artery grafting, and it is doing so well. We all know in, in cardiology, cardiac surgery, general medicine, that once internal mammary artery is doing well for a few years, it is unlikely to get blocked forever. And so graft like that is fantastically lumbar risk of hoda. It will go on. Patient has to be disciplined. Follow-up should be good. Doctor should be very careful to follow that guy. His diabetes should be well managed. Blood pressure should be well managed. He should have some discipline of his lifestyle. The second, the top one, radial artery from the hand. In the beginning, the radial artery will abuse everybody. No, it's not good, Chitu. No. Today, now there's a lot of evidence. And this is my case. Look, such smooth arterial graft. This is 16 years post bypass surgery. And it is, this artery is bypassing two coronary arteries down below. And the last one is a gastroepiploic artery from the abdomen, from the stomach, brought through the diaphragm to the right coronary artery. Again, viable after 14 years. These arterial grafts will never get blocked. Now, a problem unlike stents where it's very mechanical in surgery there are too many variables but the worst variable is the surgeon himself a good surgeon not so good surgeon can be a variable so very difficult to pick up you know uh, the astute studies like in stenting there was this guy gersh he is the chair of myoclinic cardiology in new england journal of medicine again i'm quoting new england journal because this is a very respectable journal that angioplasty treats isolated lesions in the proximal early vessel and bypass surgery bypasses that proximal vessel, the early vessel and it's by, and the graft ends up in the later part of the vessel. All the newer disease will happen in the early part of the vessel. So this advantage of bypass will never go. Then what are the indications? Then whom do we put stents and whom do we put bypasses? American Heart Association and American College of Cardiology recommendations can be better recommendations because they are a big body and also uh, though their companies are all there, but there is a task force of that country, left vein, which is dis which is not discrete. Very early in the beginning of the body, it can still be stented, but later part of the body, complex, no, it has to be surgery. All the three arteries are blocked and the blocks are quite... Um, strong and also there has been a heart attack before and the left ventricle is not so good there is no question at all they have to be bypassed but even if the left ventricle is good and those blocks are bad everywhere no they should be bypassed if the diffuse so for that there comes the controversy so if you do a syntax scoring the controversy will go then diffuse double vessel disease involving proximal left front artery and lv is little poor then again, it must and should bypass surgery. But again, if the left ventricle is not that bad, bad, look at the syntax code. And then there is a left front artery disease where a bypass, where a heart attack can be killing heart attack, and if it is not stentable, then bypass surgery. Now, in our country, what happens is hardly anybody is insured. Everybody is putting hand in their pocket. Most of the people are poor. If they get a major expenditure because of a problem, and they go on doing the procedures again and again in their life, they will go into something called as a financial shock, like a health shock. So, we feel that there should be a lower trigger for doing bypass surgery rather than stenting for patients who are non-reimbursed.
This is the first time it's my sentence. Till now, I was only talking about heavyweight evidences. Then, so it is a good idea to do bypass surgery in multivessel coronary disease rather than putting multiple stents. Whether our patients, like in Karnataka, whether they're in Bangalore or they're in a small place like Biru, large number of them pay out of pocket. They're not insured. Repeated reimbursements are unlikely even in the reimbursed patients. Then their reimbursement bodies will start playing politics with them. They who want to bleed. Then in time, effective primary angioplasty. So people say that you will do one stand now, we'll wait, we'll see later on. But suddenly heart attack happens, then the correct treatment is to do an urgent emergency stand that golden hour. Golden hour doesn't happen in big cities because of traffic and in smaller towns because of facilities, indecisiveness, lack of finances. Then it may also, this kind of thing, we are unnecessarily putting stents, can put the hospitals on back foot with the payers like the, the insurance companies, corporates who are paying for their employees, public sector companies are paying for like armies, etc. You know, everybody will start raising. So this is an embarrassing situation. This editorial in an important journal, again, New England Journal of Medicine, said that uh, publication is generally balanced. The syntax trial publication was generally balanced and it calls for separating the diagnosis making, the angiography and the treatment decision should be different and there should be a meeting of everybody. It doesn't happen, it's not realistic. So most probably all the referring doctors should take two opinions, surgeons and cardiologists. And that is what the guidelines in social medicated countries like Italy, France are doing, that there are government GOs that you better take the surgeon's opinion also and don't allow a self-referral. Then this editorial in uh, another important journal, the Journal of Thoracic and Cardiac Surgery is the most respected journal. And this article summarized that despite of these findings, it is apparent that their translation into practice is being heavily influenced by various stakeholders whose belief systems are unfulfilled by this staggering evidence. The purpose of this editorial is to clarify the body of this evidence as it exists today, so that all the stakeholders are held accountable to the primary stakeholder, that is our patient. The last, this Journal of Thoracic and Cardiac Surgeon, again this heavy journal, another editorial written by David Tagart, who walked out of the Excel trial, who is the chair for the Oxford University Radcliffe Hospital. There are three points from that, from that editorial. A, the cardiologist is the gatekeeper, the physician, and this may produce a conflict of interest in terms of self-referral, which is not a very nice thing. The disingenuous presentation and inappropriate application of results of randomized trials in highly select atypical groups to the whole population again can mislead you. Third, the result of what happens when evidence-based medicine is challenged by a multi-billion dollar industry. So that is all about the evidence, that is all about in multivessel disease, coronary artery surgery should be done however painful it may look, however you don't want it, you will end up there. Today we do a lot of bypass surgeries in my 240s hospital in Bangalore. Most of the patients, almost all, have got a block stent and then I'm doing a bypass surgery. Now there are papers after papers that if you are doing bypass surgery after multiple block stents, the bypass surgery will be more risky and it will not be the same bypass surgery like a fresh bypass surgery. Now we will forget all that and I'll just quickly educate you on some higher things in bypass surgery that people are doing now. Now because of the multiple haphazard stent things, what patients we are getting now have got diffuse disease and they have got ongoing uh, symptoms and they may they are threatened to get a heart attack. So we have to do something. So there is to be a procedure called as the uh, Nivedita, can you put on the video yes. please? There was a procedure called endarterectomy where you core out that entire disease segment from the inside the artery and then clear the artery and then put the graft. People used to this uh, video, operative video, will show you how I am doing a coronary endarterectomy.
at the lateral aspect of the heart from a obtuse marginal branch of a circumflex artery. I am doing this bypass surgery using a left and right internal memory Y graft and a side to side anastomosis of the right internal memory artery Y limb is going on the obtuse marginal branch of the circumflex artery which is completely severely diseased and requires an endarterectomy. But whichever artery I might do an endarterectomy, it will be very much the same. The endarterectomy could be done like this as you see in this video which is common or it could be a complete open endarterectomy where I lay open the entire artery and gently remove the whole plaque. That's easier but closure grafting will take a very long time. I prefer this as long as if it is possible. 20% time distally the plaque might break and I may have to make another incision and extract the rest of the plaque in the same manner. Important thing is note that I am not pulling the plaque. I am trying to just hold the plaque firm and push the heart away from the plaque. Push the heart away from the plaque. Sometimes the plaque is stuck. I might tease it holding the epicardium in the forcep and, 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 and free that adhesion. Or sometimes I could pass a thin olive tipped probe and free it up. Thank you. So there I was doing an internal two internal memory Y on the side of the heart, the circumflex artery, obtuse marginal branch. I was doing the endarterectomy. Any artery we can do endarterectomy long. Then these papers, I'll show you two papers. It shows this was a 108, 101 patients. Endarterectomy is done for diffuse coronary artery disease. And it showed that there, there was an excellent long-term result. The problem about such procedure is the surgeon should be well trained. The another was all the patients were subjected to angiogram. At the end of one year, they were all studied, and again, it's an excellent result. So well done, angio uh, endarterectomy. Today, otherwise, this patient, we have to say we can't do anything. How long it lasts, it lasts, and we will treat you medically. But that's not the issue. There are things that we can do today. Then this our original article, Japanese article, tells you that when we do that kind of coring out, whatever is left in the bottom of that uh, of that artery inside will regenerate and form new smooth muscles and form a nice new inner lining within a very short time and a new lumen would be formed. The surgeon has done a good job. The, then this controversy, the problem over minimally invasive bypass surgery, keyhole bypass surgery. Too many people are talking about it. We were the pioneers in India in 1994 of September in the Asian and Australian continents, we did the first minimally invasive bypass surgery in Bangalore on the Cunningham Road. And then since then, uh, we have come a long way. At that time, we were the monkeys with the hammer in the hand and everything looked like a nail. We quickly did many, many cases. But then we realized that, uh, anyway, I when we realized that, no, this was not for multi-vessel, it was only for a couple of front vessels and we stuck to that. Then came these two important papers which showed that if you can do minimal invasive surgery with less mobility, less blood loss and an internal memory artery properly, it can be superior to stenting that artery. But that is debatable. But there are these two solid papers that I'm showing you. One and two. What 2014 and another paper was. So there again, there is a proof that properly done internal memory artery can beat any uh, stent. And that is quite... Uh, you know, appealing to common sense. So came Medtronic company and they brought certain devices by which we could graft multiple arteries through a minimally invasive by bypass surgery. Now, most of the bypass surgery in India, we are doing beating heart without heart lung machine. I was the beginner, I was the pioneer in 1990s, uh, in the 1990-91. But then, even today, this debate goes on that can you do fantastic good anastomosis of the arteries by beating heart bypass surgery. Most of the Western countries, Europe and the North America are challenging that and majority surgeons there still continue to stop the heart, have the heart on by and heart lung machine, cardioplegia, stop the heart and do the surgery in an ancient way. We are doing it without all that on beating heart. But then that is still being challenged. When we do the same beating heart surgery through a small keyhole, and try to bypass grafts all around, 
that doubt, that debate, that long term result will be as good is yet to be proven. So in our practice, we are sticking to the front grafts which are easy, which, with which our hands are lubricated for minimally invasive, about 25-30% patient and all other patients we will do properly with open sternotomy. You must understand whatever does outside, whether like this or like this, inside operation is same. And inside what is important is your anastomosis joining should be excellent and the uh, every vessel that is blocked should be covered, should be grafted. If that is not done through a QL surgery, then you are done something wrong. And also cosmetic is not the bottom line. For women, yes, we will bend backwards. For a man, it's all hairy chest. So cosmesis is not the thing. There's a guy called Dr. McGinn who is one of the top in this area. I was having a conversation with him in Bangalore when he had come to do a lecture with us. I asked him that you went quite gung-ho on this and why were you so charmed by that? But he was very frank. He said, I came to New York where the quality of competition is so high and I had to do something one up and I started that. But patient, that's not a problem for patient. That may be a problem for us surgeons. So this area is still to have a lot of froth to yet settle down. There are people who have been doing half sternum cut and calling it mid, mini, minimally in which surgery know that we are not amused by that because blood loss will be the same. Pain may be a little more because the bone is cut in a crooked fashion. So it may look good to look at, but for a man, it's all hairs. And for women, it will go inside even a bikini. So we have been doing this called abdominal bypass surgery where we go behind the sternum and I will not waste your time on that. So I will not waste time on all this. And then another thing is about robotic bypass surgery. The robot came, Da Vinci from Texas for cardiac surgery. And we quickly realized it was not useful. The learning curve was too steep. It was dangerous for the patient apart from the cost. So, but then the other specialty is very quick to understand its potential. Urology, oncosurgery, gynecology. Today in my hospital, Banagata Road 40s hospital, almost every day in my next theater, robotic theater, at least three robotic surgeries happen, but they're not cardiac. Cardiac, we can do, but it's going to be me too. We still today don't know the ASD closure, oh, it can be done properly. But then we can also do all my, all my colleagues do it with a, such a small incision. We can take down the internal mammary arteries and then make a uh, smaller incision and do the minimal energy bypass surgery. But that we can do with a simple endoscope. So mitral wall repair, oh, that could be potential because here you get a 3D vision and the depth perception is very nice, but the learning curve is very steep. That is why this, in the, in this whole huge India, which has got a few thousand surgeons who are advanced, who are well accomplished, hardly a couple of them are doing routinely robotic surgery. So robotic surgery could be a magnificent branding and marketing tool for the hospital. It is yet to establish itself as a good tool, alternative to off-pump full sonotomy surgery or even the minimal invasive surgery and tell with surety that we will give you graft quality in long term as good as this. No, that is a very fat question mark. Then we have the next uh, group, uh, next set. Yes. Thank yes. you. Very much. So we talked about evidence, stent versus bypass surgery. For multivessel disease, it has to be bypass surgery. Now look at this video. Can we have this video? In this video, I am showing you what happens if there is a heart attack, how the scarred tissue will go on dilating. You show the video, please. So this video showed that when there is a scar of a heart attack, the muscle tissue is dead and scarred, the pressure inside will keep on dilating that. 
and over a period of time the heart will become large it will become dumbbell shaped its shape will be lost its size will be big and the output will reduce and the people will go into heart failure the sluggish area will develop a clot the clot pieces can go to the brain and cause a major paralysis the the heart valves will get dilated displaced and distorted and the leak will start if the valve leak starts then more volume overload and the heart will become a bigger football so if a patient comes after a heart attack and if his size and is distorted valve is leaking just doing bypass surgery also is not enough so the referring doctor must see on the echo in his town is there a significant mitral valve leak then he must ask the surgeon to repair the leak if the va the heart is aneurysmal in one side he should ask the surgeon to do repair of that i okay yeah. now can we show these videos ah uh, yes sir you can see pre operative and post operative how i repair the heart okay what we were seeing in that that first ventricle was completely distorted dumbbell shape lost its size lost its shape and in the second video i showed there a wire scene i showed that post operatively how nice it became spindle shape bullet shape size and shape had come back all those things can be done not a very high hanging fruit and it's done quite often by us so that has to be done then this shows you studies which shows that it is very effective there were some papers which challenged that but then the study showed that it was those papers were really half baked they could not do a good job and the people who were experienced they could actually show such different results so that stays uh, no need of video i am just talking to them about it and the valve is leaking then it is very easy to repair that leak we divide the leak as mild moderate or severe and you can see it on the echo very easily within couple of minutes if the leak is severe this patient will have limited life span later on he will keep on coming back with heart failure spend lot of money die bad so after doing bypass surgeries we must repair that valve it's very easy we have what deformed reformed geometrically designed rings we measure that valve put the ring inside and once the ring is put all the the leak will go junior most person in my team can actually do this repair so this also the referring doctor must remember then this show, this study shows you that after a particular red line if you allow this mitral leak to be there then death will come faster heart failures will start badly many people will have blockages like the coronary artery into the carotid artery which supplies the blood to the brain any patient who has got triple vessel disease he has a 33% chance of having a block in the coronary arteries diagnosis is very simple no money all we do is put a stethoscope put it on the neck and you will hear a very harsh arrogant murmuring sound there and then we get a study done of scan and the scan will show how tight is the block how is the block etc etc if the block is tight patient is getting symptoms and we do a bypass surgery because there are blocks then they will get stroke and they will get paralysis so for this kind of patients we do the bypass surgery and the carotid endarterectomy clearing the 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 block together there are a lot of studies which show that you better do surgery and not stand there and that there is absolutely no much debate on that so this picture shows you that after remove the block i take the vein from the leg and a small piece of that and i put it on that that area where i incised and make the artery bigger and then this will be a very long lasting solution for that this paper shows you that endarterectomy the operation is far superior any which way you look at even the cost wise it is almost three times less than the stenting this paper shows that the operation is better today we can do all kind of things look at this 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 is a scan this guy i won't tell his name he's a chairman now he's a minister he was a chairman of the tv nigerian tv now he's a minister as well he came with a bad heart with a after a heart attack required five grafts he would require intraoperative bone pump because the heart was poor we did a screening pre operatively and we found there was a tumor in the liver we did a needle biopsy to the cancer we did a pet scan there were no secondaries anywhere we did bypass surgery with the same incision going like a l and also did the tumor removal partial hepatectomy in the same city 
Seventh day, he was discharged. He did extremely well. We do this kind of thing very often. And he is still doing very well. And he has climbed in his career. This, you can see a huge incision and all that. So, we have come a long way. You can stent anything. You can bypass anything. But then there has to be very clear-cut indications and clear-cut clear, clear -cut guidelines. So, thank you very much for attending this session. And then we could now get back to Dr. Rohit and open this session for discussion and questions, etc. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. It was really a very wonderful session and uh, very enlightening videos. Uh, it actually gave a good idea, good outlook. Because the thing is, when we practice, uh, as patients come to our clinic with just an MI or something, we usually have just one plan refer to a cardiologist. We never knew that there were so many sides to the same story. So uh, it. Today, information is at a click of a button. And that's why that's, everybody should keep abreast. And that's why. That's, yeah, that's really nice, sir. So uh, we'll just take up the questions. Uh, question, what is the best time for non cardiac surgery? So somebody has got a cholecystectomy to be done. Somebody has got a hernia to be done. Somebody needs to do a knee replacement. Somebody needs to go for a kidney transplant. I did a very senior physician of Bangalore today who is in renal failure on dialysis. He has to go to Cochin because that is where he's enrolled back for uh, transplant. I would say anywhere between one to two months. But surgeries like thyroid, gallbladder stones or any surgeries, we could actually do simultaneously under the same anesthesia. Why? Because A, the patient will recover only once, suffer only once, money spent will be less, relatives will suffer only once. So many of them we do in the same city. But if they have to be spread, Spread it over after a month. So there's one question. Uh, what's your opinion about EDTA chelation therapy for coronary artery disease? Whether it can be ruled as ruled uh, used as an adjunct or alternative to CABG or stenting, or is there any? Uh, I'm not too much on that. I will answer in a very simple way. That there are top hospitals in Bangalore, Bombay, Cochin. Which hospital is offering chelation therapy? And if the chelation therapy is done in dingy flats in smaller towns, that summarizes the answer. Next question. So what is the role of a CT coronary calcium score in assessing coronary artery disease? Excellent question. See, today, Puneet Rajkumar's death, a lot of young celebrity death has raised a question that how do you diagnose early? Puneet had a tremendous family history. His eldest brother Raghavendra came to us when he was just 23 years old with an anterior wall heart attack. Clean cut guy, no habits, daily huge dance practice, lot, lot of yoga. Father was a very disciplined, he had instilled fantastic discipline in his children, but 23 years old and heart attack. Then uh, after him came Dr. Rajkumar, the father, and he was our patient for long many years, but he was extremely extraordinarily disciplined person. He survived very well, died of some other cause. So Puneet had this problem was not surprising. So if somebody has a family history, you should wake up 35 parties over, little discipline of food, etc. etc. But then start doing annual checks. At least three years. TMT, treadmill test shows any doubtful problems or symptoms, strong family history, but normal treadmill, don't respect the treadmill. And then you must get investigated further. Just because you have no huge evidence to do a uh, do an angiogram, do a calcium scoring. If calcium scoring is significant, then you must proceed further. And that calcium scoring is very silly, very simple. Most of the cardiologists can do it very fast for you. So, and also look at other risk factors. Your low density lipids, which are the bad lipids, they should be 90 or above. Your apolipoprotein, I mean lipoprotein A, if it is not normal, again that is a bad thing. Homocysteine for young people. All these are indicators. Your, your uh, inflammatory markers. All these are indicators. So this is how you look at it holistically. Not just keep, take one parameter. But the bottom line is. If you are having family history. If there are any other risk factors. Then you go checking once in at least a couple of years. Yeah, That's true. So actually in Mumbai also. There was one famous doctor called Dr. Rakesh Sinha. So he was the uh, holding the Guinness World Record. For removing the largest uterine fibroid. And uh, he went for a marathon and he collapsed and he expired immediately. So, see, sudden cardiac death, also people should understand, it can be due to so many things, brain hemorrhages, strokes, this, that. And the heart, the commonest is 
you know, arrhythmias. There is a thing called WPW syndrome, Wolf Parkinson White syndrome, very common in young people, can give sudden deaths. Many times the coronaries have abnormality. There could be a bad tense muscular bridge on the left anterior descending coronary artery that should be diagnosed. Sometimes the left anterior descending coronary artery could arise from the pulmonary artery and all hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. There are many other rare diseases, aortic stenosis. So these people will fall on a football ground, get a syncope. In the ER, people should have high suspicion and most of the cardiologists are knowing this. You know, there is a set pattern and the cardiologists will just pick them up like that. But the important thing is to consult. Right. Uh, sir, next question. Uh, please elucidate in total arterial graft CABG. Is it superior to conventional SVG? Can a patient go for total, total arterial graft and redo CABG? See, the total arterial that word has created a lot of fancy. In Bombay, I had some seniors who kept on doing any patient comes bilateral inter memory, whether it's an insulin dependent diabetes, he's a fat guy, he's got a asthma, doesn't matter because the whole thing was branded so high, just like these multiple stents. And no, in MCS cardiac surgery, which is a post doctoral post graduation for cardiac surgery, we give a full essay question called conduit selection in bypass surgery. Five patients are not the same, like five fingers. Every patient has got different characteristics. Somebody has got insulin diabetes, insulin dependent diabetes. Somebody has got bad lungs. Somebody has got renal failure. Somebody is chaka chaka chak, no problem at all young. So we customize. So bilateral intermammary artery can be a very good operation in a selected subgroup. Radial artery graft, which was thought to be bad, now it has been shown by the newer studies, the ARTS trial, that no, it's a fantastic graft, next only to an internal memory artery. And then veins, once upon a time, we treated veins very badly and they block very fast. Then came the awareness that we should do them with love and properly. We are doing it now. And then came a joker on the horizon, the statins. When we started treating all bypass surgery patients with statins, suddenly the vein grafts were doing so well. And look at the social media. Everybody thinks that statins are banned. Statins are bad. No, that's wrong. Don't learn medicine from social media for God's sake. Because someday it will kill you. And so, uh, conduit strategy for everybody, bilateral IMA, everybody total arterial revascularization, that is not true. Today, for example, the senior physician who is so famous in Bangalore, I offered in the morning. I gave him one intermammary and all veins. Because... A one side he has got AV fistula for the dialysis. They start a dialysis, we suck the blood, all the internal memory artery from the left side, the blood will go to the, dial to the dialysis and he will have ischemia. Then, so no internal memory artery. So I took internal memory artery from the opposite side. Then his radial artery, the cardiologists have done twice angiogram, the radial artery has been damaged. So on the other side, the other side there is a fistula. So I can't take radial artery. So we put an endoscope, took out the veins and we gave him veins. So, in each patient, it will be different. So, leave it to the surgeon is the correct answer to your question because it's a highly technical thing. And in that, what happens when the patient comes for surgery, he has brought so much of knowledge from so many people telling him who have no idea about surgery. And there are a lot of times cardiologists will tell that this patient is inoperable. No, we can do an endarterectomy. We can do lots of things. So, for God's sake, these decisions, which are highly technical, leave it to the experienced cardiac surgeon. So then there's another question. What's your take? On it? Difficult to discuss to a non-cardiac surgeon. Yeah. So uh, next question. What's your take on EECP as an alternative to CABG? It's a good palliative uh, thing. Hospitals are having it. It's for a very selected subgroup of patients. And that has to be decided between cardiologist, cardiac surgeon by a group meeting. Those are little fine decisions, but for a certain subgroup of patient, it's a good preparation and it's a good uh, therapy. But not as a, for everybody, it, you know, all kind of things I see on WhatsApp, bypass the bypass, bypass the stent, do ECP. No, you are overselling, you are some dalal sitting there, don't do like that. This, the, there's a lot of science in this area. If I take out all the books, periodicals, scientific literature published on coronary artery disease, medicine uh, uh, and on, on all the areas, you know, almost 10,000 volumes of books will be there in that library. And then today 
we forgot to talk about medicine. Today, fantastic new medicines have come. So all the people on the angiogram who have disease which is not tight, and there is something called the FFR. And FFR, we can measure exactly how much flow is going in that artery. Structural understanding by angiogram, functional understanding by FFV. The cardiologists are very big experts in that. The FAME study showed by angiography and FFR, if you apply that, then the bypass is just far superior. So by that, many patients, actually majority of the patients are candidates for tight lifestyle and only medicines. And some patients, about 25% will be between stents and bypass surgery. And that I already discussed. So you are saying something, Rubik, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, no, so I was just going to the next question. Uh, yeah, is Holter monitoring done in run-up cardiac surgery routinely? Any place where there is a cardiology uh, unit and a cardiac surgery unit, they all will do Holter monitoring. Holter monitoring is done as a 24 hours or more ECG to know whether there are arrhythmias, what are the arrhythmias, where are arrhythmias, etc. etc. And then the, there is a specialist cardiologist called electrophysiologist. These are the, some of the smartest guys in my, my world of cardiac sciences. And these guys will then take it forward and do all kind of tests and pinpoint the diagnosis and treat that patient, the arrhythmias either by medicines or by catheter ablation of those points or some hybrid management between surgeons and these cardiologists. Uh, so can coronary plaques get reversed by statins and lifestyle changes? Is there any evidence for this? It can be arrested, not reversed. Dean Ornish came, made such a big hangama and now Dean Ornish is forgotten. Or Next. Right. Uh, so then one final question and a personal one. What made you choose cardiac surgery? Oh, anybody who goes to a bad branch like cardiac surgery where life is so difficult, uh, it's only passion. Not as a, I didn't get anything, I went to cardiac surgery, never do that. General practice is a evergreen devanan. It will never die. It will always be young. And uh, I... Mm, I was doing vascular surgery as my choice after my MS. And then next to my theater in Bombay Hospital was Dr. Nemish Shah, who used to do a lot of cardiac surgery, only guy in private that time. And so I was charmed by looking at that. And But I half-heartedly uh, chased and got a seat in the best that time, the KM. And in KM, very early in my life, I was too young, impressionable. Uh, I was given to uh, do an independent open heart surgery first time by my chief, Dr. Parukar. And that was the turning point because I fell in love. And I was so emotional when I saw I could stop the heart and restart and do all that. So it's exactly like falling in love. And once that happens with a genuine fashion, not you are cheating yourself, it's true love. It never goes off. So it's there. So mm -hmm. for all the medical students here, post-graduation do for passion and don't Go to all the Western countries. General practice is the backbone of medicine. India, we screwed up, but we will come back. It will all come back there. The whole cycle will complete. General right. practice will be the Devana. Mm -hmm. Or good. Yes. So it was great to have you to very learn very uh, advanced things from you, to know all the basics as well, and to realize as what physicians and what general practitioners should know while referring a patient ahead. So thank you so much for, for joining us, for uh, clearing all our doubts too, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you so much, sir, for coming on to Netflix. Uh, so we did have the polls. If you would like to run them now, uh, we can uh, run them. Uh, so we have two polls uh, for the audience. Uh, you can put in your words. Uh, uh, based on what y'all just uh, heard throughout the talk, what would uh, your take be? Oh, you have to just, you know, click on that and click on Click. Something. Yes. For your choice, click on submit. Okay. Uh, so for the first vote, will you refer a patient with significant triple vessel coronary artery stenosis? Um, we had most of them go in 98 percent go in for bypass surgery they would prefer a refer a patient for bypa a bypass surgery uh, running the second poll 
the second one was will you refer a patient with significant left main coronary artery stenosis uh 66% would refer them for a bypass surgery so that was the result for the good can we uh, thank you it was an interesting session innovative good luck to medflix come with nice topics like this and all the thank best you. to you all thank you so much sir. You. and we hope to have thank you again on the platform as well excellent good night thank good you night. good night everyone good night